Okay, so today what we're going to be talking about is stoichiometry with Avogadro's number. Now, I know we haven't really talked about Avogadro's number that much, but Avogadro's number is basically the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's what it is. He is the one who came up with um, that one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. All right. So, again, if you ever need to pause the video, feel free to pause it. I'm just going to keep going through it, though, so stay with me if you can, um, or just stop it if you need to finish writing something, so I, I want you to be able to pay attention to what I'm saying. Um, so let's start, though, at this point, where we have one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, remember, this mole is kind of referring to, like, a dozen. So a dozen could refer to eggs, cats, people, socks, whatever. We could have a dozen referring to any types of things. That's the same with a mole. A mole could refer to any of these types of um, smaller particles that we have in chemistry. So it could refer to atoms, particles, molecules, ions, etc. So whenever you see any of these words in your problem, you'll know that you're probably going to have to use this number because it is how we convert things either from one of these words to grams or moles or from grams or moles to atoms, particles, molecules, ions, etc. All right. Um, by taking this, we can actually make ourselves a new ratio. So you know how we've been using ratios, you know, like the mole ratio to convert from moles to moles, or the molar mass ratio to convert from grams to moles. We can make a new ratio that will help us convert things from moles into atoms, particles, molecules, ions, etc. So this will look something like this. Um, for every one mole that you have, you have... 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, you know, and then this could be atoms, particles, you know, etc. Whatever words you want behind that. Um, and again, this ratio is one of them. The other one, if you can flip them, you can also use that in your equations. So you'll see, I re-put um, this chart that we've been looking at in this video. Um, and I've added another section down here. So it says when you're going from particles of A to moles, you're going to be using this number. All right, so you're going to be using this ratio to get you from particles to moles. So we're going to be able to do problems now using this ratio as we're trying to go from particles to moles or moles to particles. Some of it might even going from particles all the way to grams or grams back to particles. All right, but we're going to use this new ratio now to help us convert these things. Okay, so let's do some practice problems. So here's your first one. How many atoms are in 1.5 moles? of O2. All right, so our first step is to look and see what we're starting with and where we're trying to go. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with this 1.5 moles of O2, and we're trying to get to atoms. So when I read this problem, you know, I first see what I'm starting with, and I know that that's going to be my number up front, so let's put that up front. I'm going to be starting with 1.5 mole O2. I know that's what I'm starting with. When I see this atoms, I know that I'm trying to get here. And I know that I'm going to eventually have to use this ratio that we have at the top. So that'll kind of give me a place that I know that I'm going to be going to. Um, and so we see we're starting kind of right here on our chart. We're starting with moles and we're trying to get down here to the particles, you know, the atoms. That's what we're trying to get to. And so starting with moles and to get down to this atom part, we're going to need to use a ratio using 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so let's make our ratio. And we need to decide what's going to be on top and what's going to be on bottom. So remember, whatever you put on bottom here, you want to cancel out with right here. So here we have moles of O2. So on bottom, we're going to want to put moles of O2 on the bottom. And on the top is what we want to end up with. So in this problem, it's just a straight one-step problem. We're going from here down to here. So on top, we want to end up with atoms of O2. All right, now to finish filling this out, um, using this ratio up here, we just put in those numbers. So we know that for 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, we can put that in. There's going to just be one mole. All right, it's a little bit confusing, but you're going to be using this ratio for every problem whenever you're converting something from moles to atoms or atoms to moles. Or, you know, moles to molecules, molecules to moles. You're always going to be using the same exact ratio. It's always going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, whatever it is, over one mole. All right. So now for this problem, if we look at um, our canceling, our moles cancel out here, our moles cancel out here. And so we're just left with atoms of O2, which is what our problem wants. So we know we can stop and we can do our math. Um, so the math here is going to be a little bit 
um, hard to type into your calculator. So you're going to be doing 1.5 and you're going to times it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So hopefully you have some type of scientific calculator. Um, I heard that the app Desmos is good for your phone if you're using your phone because um, it's a little bit hard to do it on the actual phone calculator. So yeah, I would either use um, a scientific calculator or download this app, Desmos, okay, that will help you do the math. Anyways, so you'll do 1.5 and then you'll times it by this, you divide by 1, and hopefully you'll get around 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd. And that is going to be atoms of O2. All right, so that is your answer. Um, if you're having problems figuring out your calculator, welcome to email me. I can try to help you. You can also Google it. Um, that could be good. I think the biggest thing is remember you have this and then this whole thing you should probably put in parentheses. That's at least what I do to make sure I keep it all together. Because some students, they accidentally multiply and then end up like dividing by that or something weird. So make sure you do this and then you multiply it by this whole thing that you put in parentheses. All right, so that's one type of problem. Let's look at our second type of problem that we could encounter. So it says, how many moles are in 6.8 times 10 to the 10th molecules of NaCl? So when I read this, I see my starting point. I'm starting with 6.8 times 10 to the 10th molecules. I see the word molecules, and I automatically know that I'm going to eventually have to use this 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, I also see that I'm going to moles, so I know this is going to be just a one-step problem because I'm going from molecules to moles. So it's just going to be one step. All right, so let's start with our molecules that it gives us in the problem. So 6.8 times 10 to the 10th molecules of NaCl. We're going to multiply that by some ratio that we're going to use. And so again, when we're thinking about what ratio we're trying to use, we're going from molecules to moles. So we're going to want to use this 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, because we're going from molecules to moles, and we see our molecules are right here, we know down on the bottom here we're going to want molecules. And on the top, we're going to want moles. Because molecules need to cancel, and we want to be left with the moles on top to give us our answer in moles. Alright, so on the bottom, we're going to put our 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of NaCl. And on the top, we're going to use moles. And remember, this ratio is always going to be a 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd with one. So you're always just going to have one mole for each thing. One mole of NaCl. All right, now for this, you can do your math because um, you'll notice that we see how this cancels out molecules here and molecules here. So you're left with moles of NaCl, which is what we want in our answer. Um, and if you do this math, again, it's a little bit tricky. You take this number and then you divide it by that number um, and you multiply by one. So remember, make sure to put these things in parentheses that are a little bit bigger. They get kind of confusing if you don't. So put this all in parentheses, divide it by that, multiply it by one, um, and hopefully you get an answer that's similar to this. Now I know I'm just giving you guys these answers right now. Um, and I hope that you're taking the time to plug them into your calculator just so that you can make sure before you do a whole homework assignment um, and it's all wrong because you don't know how to plug it into your calculator, make sure that you know how to plug it into your calculator to get these answers, okay? If you're not, email me, um, and we can talk about it. So, um, yeah, so you should end up with 1.133 times 10 to the negative 13th molecules of NaCl. That should be your answer. All right, this final one is the hardest one, all right? So it says, if I have 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 25th atoms how, of MgO, how many grams do I have? So you'll notice we're going to start with the atoms, that's the number it gives us, and we're going to go to grams. So if we look at our chart up here, you'll see that we are starting down here, and we're trying to get to grams, which is way over there. So we're starting here, we're trying to get over here, so we're going to have to do one step and then two steps. So we're going to have to change this into moles and then change it into grams. If you're ever confused what to do with most of these problems, if you change things into moles, then it'll be easy to go back and forth between things. So we're going to have to change this to moles and then to grams. So let's get started with our number. Um, let me use a little bit thinner of a marker to get this problem hopefully to fit. 7.7 uh, .7 .7 times 10 to the 24 atoms of MgO is our starting. And we're going to multiply it by some ratio that we're going to have. Um, and again, we need to change it into moles. We see we have atoms here, so we want atoms on the bottom. We're trying to get it to moles, so we're going to put moles on top. 
So on the bottom, we're going to have the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of MgO, and that's for every one mole of MgO. Again, this is kind of a constant um, ratio that we're going to use. You see how it kind of stays the same through all of our, throughout all of our problems. All right, all of these kind of is the same thing. All right, so when we do that, we can see that our atoms cancel out. And so we're left with moles, and we want it in grams. So we actually need to change this now to grams. So we're going to multiply it by some ratio, and we're hoping to change it to grams. Um, so again, to do your grams, if you look back up at your chart up here, we're going from moles to grams. So we're going to use the molar mass from our periodic table. So you look up how much mg weighs, and you look up how much O weighs, and you add them together. And so you get around, um, let's see, 40... 0.3 grams of MgO. That's about how much it weighs. Now remember, we're putting this on top because we're wanting to get to grams, so we put it on top. We know what we put on bottom because we want to cancel out with whatever's over here. So on bottom here, we want moles of MgO, okay, so that we can cancel them out. Um, and remember, when you're using a number from your periodic table, it's always just going to be for one mole of that element or of that compound. So this is just going to be for one mole of MgO. All right, now we should be ready um, to finish canceling these things out for a mole of MgO, mole of MgO. So we're left with grams of MgO. And now we need to do our math. Um, so we'll take the 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 24th, times it by 1, divide it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and then multiply it by 40.3. And in the end, we should get about 151.3 grams of MgO. All right. Okay, so these problems are just like we've been doing. We're just always going to use these ratios. Um, again, and you know you need to use this if you're ever going to be dealing with atoms or molecules. Or if you need to get to atoms or molecules, you know you're going to have to use some sort of ratio like these ones that we've seen here. All right. Um, you could also add onto your little chart thing. You can add this bottom part down here to help you know that this is um, the way to get um, from particles to moles is through the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and that you'll have to do two steps to get to grams if you're starting with particles. All right, try to do that homework. Um, it's really similar to these problems, so come back and watch this or listen if you need help on it. Um, please feel free to email me if you get stuck. Um, I want to help you. We have about a, a test in about a week and a half, um, so hopefully we can feel really prepared before that so that you guys can do super well in your tests and end up crushing this semester in chemistry. All right, good luck, guys. Hope to hear from you soon.